Hello, welcome back to Vidorama, where we remember the VHS releases of the past in graphic detail. My name's Avron Jones, and today I'll be building a birdhouse out of pine. Only joking, I'm going to be painting a tribute to a movie that we rented on video back in the day. The ultimate melt movie, Street Trash, released in 1987. A movie full of colourful characters and colourful ooze. As ever, I've prepared the drawing beforehand, and I photocopied the drawing onto thin card for painting. Today I think I'll bend my own rules slightly and add an extra colour to my palette. So this time I will be using four colours. Mars Black, Titanium White, Blue Lake and Velvet Purple. I'll be applying the detail with pens. So join me as I paint a tribute to Street Trash. Right, I am assuming that you've already watched the movie, but if you haven't, Street Trash tells of a liquor store in Brooklyn. The owner finds a case of Tenafly Viper. An alcoholic drink which is 60 years out of date but he decides to sell it on the cheap to the local hobos unaware that the bargain booze has a side effect it causes the drinker to melt and explode on one occasion while the bottles pass various hands we see the lives of two homeless brothers uh, living in a junkyard which has been ruled by a deranged vietnam veteran named bronson Meanwhile, Bill the cop tries to figure out what is actually melting the homeless and tries to put an end to Bronson's violent rule. And that's just a fraction of what goes on in this movie. To give you the entire premise, it would take the entire length of this video to get through. All I'll say is, watch it for yourselves. Just to explain what I'm doing here, I'm masking off the image with paper and cutouts and applying pressure to the nib of the pen. I then flick off the excess ink. The paper cutouts shield the parts of the piece I want to keep clean. Then referring back to a method I've used on past projects, I mix my paint and add water to it, creating a thin mixture. It varies between what type of acrylic paint I'm using. And I then draw up the paint with the pipette and apply the mixture to the piece. I allow the paint to run down the card, creating a runny track down the art. It's great for uh, slime or blood. I had great fun doing this on last year's tributes to the Incredible Melting Man and the Red Lips painting. Can get messy, as you're never quite sure what direction it's going to take. I'm quite precise in how I work, and even here I try to have a certain amount of control over what's happening. But it is fun just letting go once in a while and leaving it to chance. I apply a lighter mixture to the lower section of the piece. I wanted it to run down into the junkyard. I want it to look messy. And now the top right section. Now in the movie there is a lot of graffiti and street art in the background and I wanted to put that in this painting and give it that street feel. But rather than put some meaningless names I thought I would put the names of my Patreon supporters in there. Just a little thank you, acknowledging their kind support and for believing in my work. If you'd like to know how to join the Vidorama Video Club, follow the link in the description to the Patreon page. But to go back to the movie, I really like Street Trash, it's great. It's got a great cast of characters. Visually, I've never fully been able to explain why, but I love movies that show off the gritty, grimy streets of New York. Instead of using blood for the melting scenes, they use brightly coloured ooze, uh, giving the scenes a different feel, some originality to it. It somehow feels like the missing link between a Troma movie and a Frank Henenlotter movie. Which would make sense, I guess, as much of the cast and crew had worked for one or the other at some point in their career. The effects were created by Jennifer Aspinall, who had previously worked on the Toxic Avenger for Troma, and Scott Coulter worked on Class of Newcomb High. Both have long since gone on to have impressive resumes in the industry. Even Street Trash's director, James Murrow, was good friends with Frank Hen and Lotta and worked for him on Basket Case in the early 80s. Now I'm working on the Viper bottle. I wanted it to feature prominently and so I made it quite big. 
Street Trash was conceived by James Murrow. Nowadays he is a cinematographer celebrated for his work with the Steadicam, uh, most notably for James Cameron movies such as The Abyss, Terminator 2, True Lies and Titanic. But before all that he was attending the School of Visual Arts in Manhattan and he shot Street Trash as a short student film. He hoped it would gain him some attention as a filmmaker the short focuses on the melting winos element of the story. Slight difference in that they drink bottles of Thunderbird from 1951. And it has nice effects. Having shown it at a few nightclubs and non-commercial venues, he received an offer to make it into a feature length movie. So now needing a script, he asked his visual arts tutor, Roy Frumpkus, if he would write a script for him. He agreed and also offered to produce the film and help to find the additional financing. Apparently Murrow made two requests as far as the script was concerned. His first was that it featured a decapitation by air tank. As his father owned a collision yard he knew how dangerous those things could be. Actually it was his father's yard that featured in the movie in fact. And the other request was that he wrote in a dismemberment scene. Now if you have watched the movie you will know that Frumpkiss did indeed put both requests in the script. Roy Frumpkiss is known in horror circles for directing the celebrated documentary Document of the Dead which documented the making of George A. Romero's Dawn of the Dead. In fact he can also be seen in Dawn of the Dead. He was the first zombie that gets a pie in the face. And he features in Street Trash. He was the businessman that gets a melted hobo to the face. The gentleman in the hat that I just painted is Fred, who was played by Mike Lackey. I wanted to include Fred in this piece as I not only like the character, but Frank also plays a part in the distribution of the Viper. Lackey not only acted in the movie, he also provided the storyboards and he worked on the effects. And since Street Trash he's been working at Marvel Comics working on such titles as Spider-Man, Silver Surfer, The Punisher and Conan the Barbarian along with some of Marvel's licensed character comics such as Ren and Stimpy and Earthworm Jim. For Frank's brother Kevin the script called for a 14 year old but it was believed that this could be problematic and could potentially hold up the film. So they put the call out for an actor 18 or over that looked 14. The part was given to an 18 year old graphic design student called Mark Sveratza. Apologies if I've pronounced that wrong. I'm removing the painting so it can be placed on the floor. I need it to be flat so I can drip the paint on, creating a random splatter. Again making sure to mask off the sections I've already painted. I'm not doing that again. I try not to go overboard with it. And then when I'm sure that the paint isn't going to run, it's back to the drawing board. And then we have this hobo called Wizzy, played by Bernard Perlman. A sleazy character and a great melt. I had to include it. But going back to the original Frumpka script for Street Trash, there was a Huckleberry Finn subtext written in for the brothers concerning their father where at the end it's revealed that Bronson was actually their father. The scene was filmed and shown at early screenings but later removed. But on the subject of cuts, one of the film's most infamous scenes, uh, the derelict dismemberment, when Street Trash was released on video here in the UK in 1987, six seconds of that scene, namely the close-ups of the offending member, were removed by the BBFC and wouldn't be returned until the film was released on DVD in 2000. The dismembered derelict was played by the production manager and associate producer Frank Farrell. Farrell was the original writer and producer on Spookies, uh, then under the title of Twisted Souls. But that's a story for another day. David Sperling was the cinematographer on Street Trash. He had previously worked on movies such as Toxic Zombies, The Bogeyman 1 and 2, and would have an extensive career. He was also the cinematographer on another movie that I like, Mom, released in 1991. But that's another story for another day. So many characters in this movie though, I'm not even sure I'll be able to cover everyone. 
Bill Shapil played Bill the cop. Interestingly, he wasn't an actor. He had been a beat cop on Times Square and 8th Avenue for 15 years. But in 1973, while investigating an incident involving a shooting at a massage parlor, he fell through a window during a gunfight and this resulted in him being laid up for nine months and on permanent disability. Despite this, he still worked for the force and was assigned to chaperone a bat specialist that caught bats in various neighborhoods around New York, testing them for rabies. She introduced him to a boyfriend who was Roy Frumpkus. Frumpkus found him to be such an interesting guy that he believed he should star in a movie, and that's just what happened. That presence obviously comes through in the movie. Um, he's got some great lines in it and the great fight scene with Big Noto as Bronson, who brings a genuinely intimidating presence to the film. Really intense character, armed with a dagger that's been carved out of a human femur. A uh, great tough guy. I said that this film feels like a trauma movie at times, and I think the other reason for that is that it also stars R.L. Ryan. Uh, he had appeared as the mayor in The Toxic Avenger and played Mr. Findlay in Class of Newcomb High. I've always found him to be an interesting actor, and I think he's great in this. Another of my favourite performers is in this, James Lawrence. Uh, this was his first movie. He originally only had a few lines, but they liked him so much they gave him more to say. Frank Henenlotter liked him so much in this movie that he cast him as Jeffrey Franken in Frankenhooker, which was released in 1990. Staying with Frank Henenlotter, Bruce Torbert, who played this guy, Paulie, he had previously worked for Henenlotter as a cinematographer on Basket Case, and he would work with him again on Brain Damage the following year. Oh, and he also provided the electronic props for Frankenhooker. I wasn't sure if I should include this stage of Paulie's Melt. Is it a spoiler? Not sure. Can't be, can it? It's on the video sleeve. But I love this melt. Um, I felt it should be included. I wanted the toilet to look really dirty, so I dry brush it with some dark highlights. Uh, just some light touches of paint on the edge of my brush. And having cleaned the brush, I then flick water onto the toilet to get some dirty spots on it before covering most of it with melted poorly. As Street Trash had featured on The Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs, the Joe Bob Briggs fan scene documents that episode, and I'm delighted to say that this painting features in issue 14. So follow the link in the description to the Paddy Jack Press site and order your copy. I get a little impressionistic here, using different tones of grey to create a scrap heap, adding a few different shapes here and there, suggesting bits of metal. Street Trash was given a limited theatrical release in the United States and during that time the Coalition for the Homeless took to the radio and expressed their disapproving views on the way the movie depicted the homeless. But despite John Waters, who loved the movie, encouraging people to go and watch it, poor distribution meant that the film didn't really find its audience. But thankfully it found them when it was released on video, I guess making it a cult movie. But if you haven't seen it yet, please be sure to check it out. Uh, but be warned, they set out to make a movie that would offend everyone, and by all accounts they succeeded. If you are easily offended, you might want to give this one a miss. But if you like your horror comedy dark, like your movies to feature bad language, nudity, street crime, alcoholism, prostitutes, assault, necrophilia, dismemberment, decapitation, and of course a lot of amazing melting, all that fun stuff, then Street Trash has got you covered. But if you haven't seen the movie before and this video has inspired you to watch it for yourselves, let me know what you thought in the comments. I'd also like to ask you, do you like the introduction of the extra colour to the painting? I might do more of this in the future, so let me know what you think. I'll just add my signature and we can call this painting done. Thank you for joining me today and keeping me company. I hope that was of interest to you and that you like the finished painting. If so, perhaps you will give this video a like or even consider subscribing to the channel. There are many more movie tribute paintings to be found. If you'd like to support the channel further, you will find links for the Patreon page and the Etsy page in the description. Feel free to recommend the next Melt movie that should feature on the channel. But until next time, good night out there, whatever you are.